Hello everybody, Mr. Facto to me again. Right, I'm moving on to the next part of me, uh, my loco that I'm building. And I'm doing the coupling rods. Um, now, you'll know from my past videos, I'm making a meter made, which is a, a six wheel version of a sweet pea. And I've been working to the sweet pea book. I've got no drawings as such. I've, I've got everything from the book. Uh, so there is a, a few things that I haven't got. And one of those things is because it's a six wheel version, I've not got these uh, measurements to work to. However, I did buy a general arrangement drawing, a full size drawing, which shows you the meter made couplings and the uh, horn opening measurements which I've worked to so the difference is that the meter made has just got one long coupling on and uh, sorry the sweet pea and the meter made has got two on that join on a clevis there so that's the difference and obviously when moving the wheels around you've also altered your connecting rod which is that one so before I start to, to manufacture these I've got to get some predetermined measurements first and the measurements I've got to get are all the widths of the horns the distance between the cheeks of the horns in the middle of the frames and then work all my measurements out from that. So coming onto coupling rods then, I can basically work to the uh, sweet pea drawing. I've just got to change the old centres of each of the connecting rods and coupling rods. So first of all then, I've took all my measurements. So I've determined all those measurements and how I've done it, I've used my telescopic gauges to get me in between my horns measured and then measure them with a micrometer and then I've used my vernier caliper to measure in between the frame of the horns like so now the only thing I'll point out here for anybody that's not expert got much experience is when you're using a vernier the slightest bit of rocking either way and you get a false reading so you must be careful with that so here's all my measurements then they're the horn guide openings they're the frame in betweens and what you have to do you've got to divide your horn guides in half take each measurement as a, as a half of that measurement then add this half to that half plus the bit in the middle and then you come up with that dimension which is your wheel centers and you do that we each we each set so they these are my wheel centers and they're all within a few thousandths of an inch that's without milling them remember so basically i've just got a uh, maybe plus or minus five thousandths to play with to get to adjust my connecting rods to them dimensions so the connecting rods, like I said, they're exactly like in the book, it's just the hole centres and the fact that where the front to front connect coupling rod meets the back coupling rod, you've got to put a clevis on. And that's the that's an, that's only the only other difference. So on this rear one here, you've got your normal brass on brass bearing on the end but no brass bearing on this end it's just a clevis and then on the front ones you've got both your brass bearings to fit on there and then on the end of that you've got the clevis that's going to fit inside that clevis to join the two up so that'll come up to there and be there right so in the book it tells you to make these um, coupling rods in the centre with 3 8 diameter bar I'm slightly deviating from that because all sweet peas and meter maids are different anyway it don't really matter 
So what I'm going to do, I've got two options really. Uh, because I've got no 3 8 bar on stock and I, I like to do things on a budget bill that I do and utilise what I've got and I've got quite a lot of this hexagonal bar uh, so my first option now we're going to and I've done a, I've done a prototype uh, mill the sides of this hexagon down to 3 8 to give me that profile so it's 3 8 thick as it would be with the bar 3 8 bar but I've left this top of this hexagon on, braise my ends on and now we're going to either do it like that or my other option is I've got quite a lot of this 9 16th diameter bar on stock uh, but, but it's a little bit rusty so what I'm doing I'm, I'm going to cut it into the appropriate lengths that I need and I'm turning it down to get the rust off to half inch diameter just taking a 16th off and then I'm going to leave it at half inch diameter as opposed to 3 8 and I've done another prototype and I'm, I'm milling the, the edge at two of the sides down to uh, 3 8 which is the thickness of the uh, brasses but left the top, at, the top diameter at half inch and I think I'm going to plug for that profile um, so as you can see I've got my ends brazed on and this is another little deviation, deviation from the drawing in the drawing, on the drawing sorry it tells you to I don't know if it shows it on this actually yeah, uh, just a minute I don't know if you can see that little detail it tells you to turn the a diameter on the end a quarter a quarter long by a quarter diameter and uh, that goes into these that then slots into these ends for it to be brazed on well I've, I've, I've again I've belt and braced it what I've done I've put a, I've put a thread on so I've, I've upped it to 5 sixteenths diameter by a quarter long I've put a 26 TPI, which is cycle thread, uh, thread on the end, and I've tapped these out to the same, and I've made them a loose, a very loose fit for the brace to run in. So it, it's, it is a very slight fit that, and I'm just screwing them in, and then brazing them on, and then machining all this up, like so. So that's that's a before and that's an after one. All brazed on. And the only other change I'm gonna do is these brasses on the end. I when I look at sweet peas I always think they they look a bit uh what's the word? Out of proportion on the ends to me. So I'm reducing all the sizes down by approximately one eighth just to make them a bit smaller and make them look in a bit more proportion and that's that's only that's just my personal preference that right so uh, this is my prototype I'm just about to go and make the brasses now for the end I think that's everything oh just the connecting rod that that's goes from your driving wheel up to you, towards your cylinder. That that's going to be slightly different. Uh, everything will be the same on that, except for the oil centres again, because you, you've obviously changed your oil centres. We're moving your wheels. Right, I managed to get my brasses made for the end of the uh, coupling rods. And I decided against using this bronze, which I said I was going to cut up. Because as, as I got into thinking about it, as I was doing it, I changed my mind and I'm using this inch and a half diameter bronze bar. Same quality bronze as other, but I'm utilising the radius on the inch and a half diameter. And I'll explain what I'm doing. 
So on this drawing then and in the book it tells you to make all your coupling rods with a brass, they call them brasses, but it's actually bronze, with a, br a, a brass in between two steel inner and outer uh, components to clamp it all together. But on this end, I don't think that steel bit's really needed. It's 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 not really doing anything, and I'll tell you. I'll explain why. When you put your coupling rod onto your onto your um, cranks, crank pins, the reason there's this steel on the on the outside of the brass is so it, it allows you to have. If there's any discrepancy in your in your hole centres, you can either shim this side of it to make the holes a bit wider, or you can take a few thousandths off this brass to make your holes narrower, just in case you're not quite spot on with your hole centres. So that's why that's why they've used steel outer and inner steel portion on the on the bronze portion but on this side there's no reason that steel's needed on that side you need it on this side obviously to to bolt everything together onto your connecting rod but on this side it's not needed so what I've done I've just I've just made the brass piece longer to accommodate where that steel would have been and I've left the radius on the bar just to give it a, 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 a small a small streamlined profile and I've also narrowed them down on the width this is a full size drawing so you can see I've, I've narrowed them down a little because it's just my personal preference really uh, I thought they look to me they look a little bit bulky that's just that's just me so I've narrowed them down a bit and streamlined them and took as much material off as I possibly could obviously the thickness has got a bit same to fit onto your crank pin so that's that end now this end you've obviously then got to make make it same as per as per the drawing because you've got to put this um, clevis part on this side for your next connecting rod because it's a six wheel version and I've got to mill a slot in that yet for the other cu coupling rod to fit into so that's that that's that coupling rod on this on the front and I'm just going to do a, a reverse of this now and, and do the same on this side but obviously with no bearing on this side it'll just have the clevis part to fit in that. Um, I've got my prototypes done so now I'm going to go ahead and make my cutting list and I think I'm plugging for this for this profile so that's for my coupling rods for the wheels two on each side then I've got to do the same with the connecting rods up to the uh, cylinder arrangement I'll probably do an update uh, in another video and do an update. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you on my next update. Bye for now then.